Hey everyone, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I'm McKinley412. Hope you're all having a wonderful week as we head into this uh, Tuesday featured slate on DK. A lot of solid pitching options, uh, in my opinion, but there's also a lot of high-end bats that I'm interested in. Uh, there's not like one singular team uh, in terms of the bats that I'm like, this is the number one. I feel like there's four or even five teams that can slide into that spot. So it's going to be really interesting uh, to see where salary and ownership and all that breaks out. Uh, but we'll talk about that here uh, as we kind of go through and break it all down. But before we begin, please hit that subscribe button. The majority of you, we get the analytics, are not subscribed to our channel who do watch. Uh, so please hit that <coughs> <coughs> really does help us out here in growing the channel and bringing you this content. So let's take a look at the sheet here. We'll start off with the pitchers. As always, we have broken down into just the salary tiers. It's not that, you know, one is better than the other. It's just, it's strictly salary separators. So Gilbert Green, Singer, and Cease. These are the four pitchers that are above 9K. Cease is way more expensive than the other three guys. And he's honestly got the toughest matchup amongst all four of these uh, pitchers. So that, that kind of puts Cease down ranked below uh, these other three guys. Now, Gilbert, I do have him ranked first. Uh, he is facing off against the Cincinnati team, who we know strikes out a ton. Uh, they're actually top five in highest strikeout rate against right-handed pitching so far on the season. Gilbert has looked phenomenal to start as well, uh, 2.66 ERA. But what I like most is consistency in his strikeouts. Uh, you can see he's already got 23 strikeouts as opposed to just three walks. So he's giving you that nice floor. Uh, the majority of his damage is coming against the home run. Uh, so it's meaning that like he's, if he allows base runners, he's getting out of a jam. He just got to limit the power. Cincinnati, they have some power. However, they are out of Cincinnati's ballpark. Uh, they get a massive park downgrade heading out into Seattle. Uh, so I do really like Gilbert here. Singer, I could listen to Singer being the number one option. Facing off against this woeful uh, Chicago White Sox team, I just worry a little bit about the weather. Uh, currently, at the place I look at, it's like a 60 to 70% chance of rain. I record these the night before, things change. Maybe by the time, you know, first pitch comes around, it won't be raining and they'll be good to go. And it's it, they won't even have a threat of a delay. In that case, I'll probably bump Singer up, but I do rank him a little bit lower only, only because of the rain. If that if weather wasn't an issue, he would be uh, an, a great, great spot. Green, I think he's really intriguing from a upside standpoint. He's probably got the weakest floor of these four guys, uh, but he also is facing off against Seattle who is number one so far on the league in, in the league in terms of highest strikeout rate. Uh, so Green, we know what his upside can be in terms of strikeouts. Like it is not uncommon for hit for him to hit that 9, 10 plus strikeout rate. But it's, <laughs> it's also not uncommon for him to get shelled and allow five, six earned runs and kind of have all those strikeouts that he generated neutralized a bit. Uh, but... Seattle, as a team, they're striking out close to a 32% clip against right-handed uh, pitching so far, which is just through the roof high. Uh, I think they have like a 2 or 3% gap uh, on even second place. Uh, but still, I, I think that Green provides a fantastic upside. Uh, Singer, I would take more over him in cash, though. Heading over into the mid-tier. The mid-tier is pretty loaded as well. Uh, I do think that there is a pretty big separation, though. Uh, I, yeah, I'm going to go with Lance Lynn up at the top, Jones, and Lopez. And then I think that's kind of where the gap is. And then Bibby uh, and Whitlock. So uh, Lynn, you can see him here facing off against Oakland, 8.4K. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still trying to get over this cough that I've had for two weeks now. I don't know when it's going away. But Lance Lynn, he's got a great matchup going up against Oakland. It's always a dream uh, ballpark for pitchers. They got that massive foul ball territory. And he's looked solid so far this season. His strike rate, strikeout rate is up. He's you know getting stretched out more and more. Lynn was a guy who we would routinely see go over 100 pitches. Like he was one of those workhorse type pitchers. 
Uh, he was at 94 pitches in his last start. Again, he's incrementally moving his way up. Would not shock me if he gets to over 100 pitches uh, in this start. And given the matchup, given all that stuff, the strikeout rate, I like really like Lance Lynn in this spot. Jones. Jared Jones, he is like the talk. He's not the talk. There's a lot of pitchers that are the talk um, so far this season, but Jared Jones for Pittsburgh, he just has a phenomenal strikeout rate and a phenomenal swinging strike rate, uh, which is even better than just getting your standard strikeouts is, is having a high swinging strike rate to go along with it, just more consistency uh, and all that kind of stuff. But I will say not 100% confident is going to be Jared Jones. Uh, the MLB website still says it's to be determined for Pittsburgh and more so than not, MLB.com is correct, and DraftKings is not, at least, you know, recording these the night before. But if it is Jared Jones, um, great matchup. However, uh, New York Mets, they actually don't strike out too much at all. Uh, their offense is pretty, I don't want to say woeful. It's looked a lot better. Like, they were completely anemic uh, to start the season off, but they are looking a lot better. Uh, they had a nice comeback here tonight on Monday night. Uh, so while I do think they are looking better and they don't strike out a whole lot, I think the strikeout whiff rate uh, that Jones has and can provide is certainly going to put him you know, up there in this middle tier. Lopez for Atlanta. Atlanta just keeps churning out these amazing pitchers. One goes down, the next guy steps up. Uh, Reynaldo Lopez, he was more of a relief pitcher, uh, but he is getting stretched out. You can see he was 94 pitches in his last start against the Mets. Facing off against Houston, Never a team that I'm really excited about targeting, uh, especially right-handed pitchers uh, against Houston. But I think that Reynaldo Lopez can provide enough of a strikeout upside uh, to make him viable. And he is the cheapest of the bunch. Bibby, Whitlock, they're there. I'm not too much to talk about. Going into low tier, uh, Kikuchi and Quintana. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to rank as like my favorite low tier pitcher. Uh, in terms of salary and everything, I think both are in fine, you know, positions to, to succeed and do well. Uh, Quintana going up against Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh really struggles against left-handed pitching. Uh, they're much more dominant against the right-handed pitching, uh, especially guys like O'Neill Cruz. O'Neill Cruz's strikeout rate in his career against left-handed pitching is like 45 to 50 percent. Uh, and I'm not even exaggerating, like he strikes out a ton, uh, and this Pittsburgh team as a whole uh, really struggles against left-handed pitching. Quintana, we just saw him absolutely, eh, I don't want to say absolutely, he he limited Atlanta and he stopped Cincinnati in Cincinnati's ballpark as well. So maybe he's not as bad as we were all expecting. However, the strikeout rate, don't be expecting you know huge numbers from him. If he even gets to like six strikeouts, I'd be very surprised. Uh, he's more of a <coughs> more of a contact pitcher, but he's going to have the nice ballpark boost playing in uh, in New York. Kikuchi facing off against the Yankees. Uh, same deal. I, I just think he's in a nice spot. His strikeout rate has gone up, uh, and he's mainly already played the Yankees, and that was kind of what's kind of come into my decision uh, is that he's faced them once already. Shut him out in 5.1 innings pitched. Uh, looked really solid. I don't have too many concerns here. Uh, I would maybe lean a little bit more towards Quintana just because of the savings and that like bats are going to be super expensive. Uh, but if you are able to get up to, if like salary didn't exist, I would probably lean towards Kikuchi uh, just because he's got more of a strikeout upside uh, than Quintana would. Sears facing off against St. Louis. Yeah, Rondon. I just don't like playing lefties against Toronto. Toronto, for years now, they just can load up their entire lineup uh, with right-handed bats, right-handed power bats as well. Uh, he's looked fine to, to start the year, uh, but it's not good enough where I'm really going to have interest in him. And then it's like a huge gap, and then it's Miley Henry. Honestly, Miley and Henry should go over into the fade category. Um, I, I really don't like these guys at all. No interest um, in them. They can join Corbin and Hendricks and Brown. Um, Dodgers pitcher to be determined. I'm not sure who it is at this point in time. And then Cannon is not in the pool for the Chicago White Sox. Uh, one thing about Cannon, he's a very 
large pitcher. Uh, I think he's 6'7", 6'6", uh, and then on the mound, it's going to be even taller. Uh, but he's not like a super, I'm going to you know power 100 mile an hour fastball pass you. Uh, he's much more about control and you know, picking his spot on the plate. So don't don't look for huge you know velocity numbers from this guy, but he can definitely pound the strike zone uh, and work the count that way. Could lean into Kansas City's uh, favor. It, you know it's a pitcher who does not walk guys at all. Like he's going to stay in the strike zone. Uh, so maybe he gets a little unlucky with the BABIP and everything. And then once he's out, which I would expect Cannon to last maybe like four five innings, you're going to get half a game of the Chicago White Sox bullpen, which is argu arguably one of the worst in all of baseball. So I do like uh, Kansas City bats, you know, as a nice cheap option. So that kind of covers the pitchers heading towards the bats. Uh, I think I might have already talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, there are a lot of bats that I have a ton of interest in, uh, but they're all like the really expensive already bats, Atlanta, Arizona, Dodgers, uh, and Chicago, specifically these four. Um, you can honestly almost put these in any of the order, you know, in any other order, uh, and I, I would be totally fine with it. But all of them are facing off against weaker pitchers uh, who just do not have strong strikeout rates at all. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but they're all facing off against weak pitchers who provide a lot of contact, a lot, allow a lot of home runs uh, to go along with that. Atlanta, doesn't matter, lefty or righty, facing off against Corbin. Corbin's a pretty even splits pitcher. Um, it's just, your issue is they're all just so expensive. And if you are going to be paying up for a pitcher, uh, maybe you want to go with uh, Singer and Gilbert, it's going to be cutting you a little bit tighter uh, on the salary. So we'll just go with Gilbert and Singer. You're already sub 4K remaining for the rest of your bats. If you want to get like two guys from Atlanta, you know, like two top tier guys from Atlanta along with those two pitchers, it's just not going to happen. It can happen, but but don't get too excited about it. Um, Arizona is going to have a little bit more value to them, um, more so than all of the other uh, teams. Uh, they're going to have probably Peterson in there uh, as a lefty batter facing off against Hendricks. Just a disastrous, disastrous numbers uh, to start the season, though. But wouldn't shock me if he's in there closer to the bottom of the lineup. Blaze Alexander, he could be a nice option here at shortstop uh, for you. And then obviously the other uh, lefties are certainly in play going up against Hendricks. On the other side of that game, uh, the Chicago Cubs bats, <clears throat> I guess if you're betting this game, Hit the over. I don't know. I like the over in this game. Uh, but Michael Bush uh, for the Cubs, he's got home runs in five straight games at this point in time. Uh, it's going to be a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, but I don't even care. Uh, Bush is taking over the league at this point in time. So Henry, he's a guy who allows a lot of hard contact, a lot of home runs. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. And Bush, I think, is in the good line to potentially get his uh, sixth straight game with a home run. In terms of GPP, I do put I did put Milwaukee here going up against Dylan Cease. Uh, we know that Cease is more than capable of having like fantastic games, uh, but he's also a pitcher over the course of his career who kind of has those blow up games uh, as well when he's not on. Milwaukee's offense has looked great. Uh, they are due for some regression. They are performing way beyond what they should be uh, performing at. I think I saw a stat, it was like a day or two ago, but like Milwaukee as a team is hitting almost 400 with runners in scoring position this season. It's not sustainable at all whatsoever. Regardless, they're hot. They're doing very well right now as a team, and maybe they can get to cease, rattle him. He's out of the game, and they can really uh, go off against that bullpen. So I do think that Milwaukee is a really intriguing team uh, in terms of uh, a GPP. Seattle, kind of the same deal. They're facing off against the pitcher in green, who historically can have those dominant strikeout games, but when he's not on, it can get really ugly really quickly. Uh, so if Seattle's able to limit some of those strikeouts, which they are certainly prone to, uh, and get to green, I could really see them, uh, you know, ramping up the score and, and kind of 
neutralizing a lot of the ownership that Green might have in tournaments because of the upside that he does have. Uh, so like in GPP, while I could that could be... GPPs are the tournaments where you're going to see Green having higher ownership because of the upside that he can bring facing off against the number one strikeout team in the entire league. But at the same time, he's a pitcher who has limited floor. A lot of people are probably not going to be playing Seattle just because their bats have really struggled a lot this season. But I think we can all agree that they are way underperforming what they are capable of. They're the complete opposite of Milwaukee. Uh, maybe you get some lower ownership on them uh, there. I already talked about Toronto. They can just stack their entire lineup with righties going up against Rodon. Uh, I like that there. In terms of like cheap, there's not much cheap uh, to be had. I already talked about Bush uh, for Chicago. Arizona's got... Um, Blaze Alexander, who could potentially be in. Uh, but Kansas City, it's really like the five through nine hitters that are going to be a little bit more affordable for Kansas City outside of them. Excuse me. And also pay attention to the weather uh, with this. Uh, but Kansas City, like, they're expensive-ish. Uh, but honestly, you know, guys like Isbell and Velasquez and even Melendez uh, is not too expensive at all. So, like, the value, I think, is probably going to be in... Kansas City, especially facing off against that Chicago White Sox bullpen, we just have to pay attention to the the weather in Chicago uh, moving forward. So that kind of <coughs> is where things wrap for me um, in terms of where it looks like at the moment things are going to probably be changing throughout the course of the day tomorrow uh, as they get a little bit you know more deep dive into the research. I'll probably be Paying attention to the weather. Maybe Singer goes up, Green goes down, Gilbert goes down, Singer goes up above them. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, but thanks for watching. As always, really do appreciate it. Again, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. It uh, really does help us out. And come join us. All the links are down in the description below. Uh, we'd love to have you in our Discord. So, uh, yeah, good luck in your contest. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.